This is Chapter 2, Elementary Programming, Programming Exercise 8, Current Time. So we have a class called showCurrentTime.java, which is a program that displays the current time in GMT. We need to devise the program so it prompts the user to enter a time zone offset to GMT and displays the time in the specified time zone. All right, so let's take a look at that program. Right here is the code that shows the current time in GMT. And when we run it, we'll see 22, 13, 20 GMT. So let's confirm that in Google and see if that's correct. To run that, and we'll see, yep, 10, 13 PM in GMT. All right, so that's the exact same time. If you subtract 12 from here, you'll get the same exact thing, 10, 13 GMT. So how was this simple program able to do all that? Well, why don't we take a look at the code and try to break it down and see how that works. In the first line of code, it says long total milliseconds equals system that current time in milliseconds. What is this and what does it do? Why don't we take a look at that method uh, in Oracle's documentation for system class and find out. So let's see. Uh, we have it right here, current time in millisecond. All right, so what it does, it says that it returns the current time in millisecond, returns the difference measured in milliseconds between the current time in midnight January 1st, 1970 UTC. Well, that's all right, okay, I kind of get it, but why don't we actually print it out and get a better visual of that and read that again? Let's see. Okay. Run that again. And let's see how that looks like. Let's see what it returns. Whoa, so it returns this large number right here. So that now makes more sense. Why is using a long data type instead of an integer data type? If you were to have an integer data type to store a number this large, you're going to get an error. So why don't we replace this long uh, data type right here with int and let's see what happened. And turns out it gives us an error message and it says incompatible types required. Right here it says int found long. Actually, no, it should be the other way. It required long and found int. So if you change that back to long, it will be Oh, stop that just right. And the reason for that error message is because int is uh, it's very small. Uh, it only holds a very small, uh, well, we wouldn't, we wouldn't really say small, but the size of int is smaller compared to the data type for long. Long could hold a very, 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 very large number. And if you were to look at this, this is hundreds. Right here would be thousands. Uh, millions, right here will be billion, and right here will be trillion. So that's one trill, one and a half trillion milliseconds. All right. So if we were to read this again, it will make much more sense. What it returns is the current time in millisecond. What is the current time, and how do we calculate in milliseconds? Well, the current time is constantly ticking, right? It is ticking, 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 ticking. Uh, milliseconds constantly increasing and is calculating this from the starting date the midnight of January 1st 1970 UTC so this millisecond is the time ever uh, that was ticking ever since January 1st 1970 UTC all the way to right now the current time and date and that is for today it is 2018 12 12 December 12. So let me see if uh, right here, no, there's no clock right here that keeps ticking. So with that is constantly calculating and that's why uh, we have a long data type holding this value. Now with that value is taking this total milliseconds to calculate the current time in seconds. Uh, no, the total mile seconds, the current second, total minute, current minute, total hours, current hours, with this simple modulus and divide operator. And of course, if you want to know more on how that works, 
check out my previous videos, which go through all of that. And I did that multiple times. All right. So hopefully uh, by now you should know how all of this or what is going on behind the scene with uh, something like this. If you see something like this right here. Now back to our exercise. Our next step is to display the message. So what we got to do is to ask the user to enter the offset time uh, for their current time zone and their current time zone. Um, and we could do that simply by creating a few variables. First, we're going to create a scanner called input system.in and two variables right here. Now, for the first variable, I'm just going to create maybe a short. Short, let's call it um, offset and a string called time zone. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user to enter the offset in hours. And I'm also going to ask the user to enter hmm, no enter the time zone. So for the hours will be offset equals uh, input dot next int. Let's see if there's a short X short. And for the time zone, it'll be time zone equals to input dot next line. And I'm just going to create another next line right here. And I'm going to edit this subtracted by all set and instead of having GMT right here we will have a uh, time zone okay all right so before we do that let's take a look so what I have here is the time zone right here it's a list of time zone that uh, we have available to verify our answer and for now, we'll be using central time and our offset is going to be six. So we're going to minus six from uh, the GMT time zone to get the CST time zone. Current time for CST is 420 p.m. Minus six CST to get 420 p.m. We might get a little bit higher, a minute or more higher, uh, but it should be about it should still be pretty accurate. All right, so we're going to run this and it say enter the offset in hours. So to get CST, we have to subtract six. So six, you can see it'll be subtracted from the current hour and we'll just write CST and bam, we got current time is 1621.17 CST or 421.17 CST. And to confirm that, let's do a refresh and Voila, we got 421 or 42140 p.m. CST for central time zone. And that's all you really have to do just to edit this code. Pretty simple, right? So that is it for this exercise.